Uh, this is a PAR. It's a grade 2 PAR. Now, there's a number of ways you could find out what grade that PAR falls under. Now, normally it's written on the PAR itself. Um, so you have a small sticker which explains what grade and what class that falls under. Uh, we'll look into the difference between grades and class in a different video. So this one, we're going to open this one and see what grade this one's fall under. Now this is the grade 2 PAR. So let me open this one and I'll show you. And now that I open this PAR, um, I open the lid. Now you could now see here, um, it clearly says what grade this PAR have fall under. Now it says it fall under grade 2. So it's a grade 2 PAR, class 2. And it's compliance to BS50131, which is the code of practice for the intruder alarm installations in the UK and for the components. So you could see um, this is written on the PAR. And sometimes you do find this in the box. But however, any, any PARs that you install with your alarm system, it should be sort of compliance to these standards. So this is a grade two one. Now, we're gonna look into the terminal blocks now. So if you first look into this terminal, um, you have the first two terminals is tamper. So that's your tamper circuit. It's basically a switch that controls by this spring. So when you press this spring, you'll have a continuity between these temper circuits. So between these two terminals, if you put your multimeter, and then if you press this spring, you will see the continuity. Then the second two are called alarm. So that's your alarm circuit. The next pair is your auxiliary power, which is 12 volt. So you get 12 volt and the zero. Now we're gonna talk about the wiring. As far as the wiring is concerned, uh, we do end of line because that's the compliance way of doing alarm circuit when you come to grade 2 systems or even grade 3 alarm systems. So how does it work? You have to use resistors uh, to make it compliance to end of line. Now even though you have two circuit, alarm and tamper circuit, we'll be only using two wires. So one in alarm, one in tamper. Um, so in this case the first terminal for the tamper is what we're going to connect to the panel and the last terminal in alarm uh, we're going to connect that one to your panel. Now here we got um, a jumper setting. Now sometimes it comes as dip switch, so it depends on what type of sensor that you're using. So this is a jumper setting. This jumper setting, you could change these jumpers uh, to different different values. So normally the values are written here, but with this, uh, you don't have the values written. But what they've done is they use A, B, C, D. So you can see that now, right? Right in the top, it says alarm. So the A, B, C, D value is associated with the alarm there. And then right in the sort of on the, in the bottom, you'd say tamper. Then again, there's another A, B, C, D. That's also associated with the tamper. So what this A, B, C, D does, A will have a res resistor value, B will have a resistor value, C will have a resistor value, and same applies to the tamper. So let's say, for example, if I just take this um, jumper out. Now I, got the option of putting this jumper with an A, B, C, D. And based on where I'm going to place this jumper, it's going to have the resistor value. So you can clearly see that now, right? So when I put the jumper, what I'm making and what I'm doing is I'm just making a connection between these two pins, right? So this jumper is nothing more than just a, a metal piece. Um, so there's a metal inside. So when I just put these jumpers across these uh, two pins, it makes a connection between these two pins. Since this, since this is a Texacom sensor, so they made it easy for you to connect to your Texacom system. So if you want this sensors to be your end of line, you have to put the jumper between uh, on between those two pins in A for alarm. And the same thing has to be done with the tamper. So you will now put this jumper in A. So A will have the value, uh, which is what required for a Texacom panel. For instance, if you are connecting to a Premier Lead 24 panel, you require 2.2 kilo ohm for your tamper value and 4.7 for your alarm value. And by you just connecting these jumpers on A both sides, you will have that value. Now you can see that I've put A activated or I've put my jumpers between A terminal for the tamper and I've done the same thing with the alarm. So this sensor will now have 2.2 for tamper value, 2.2 kilo ohm and also 4.7 kilo ohm for the alarm value. 
So those um, those are the two values that require for Texacom system. Then I've got another set of jumper setting here, this side, um, which allows me to switch on switch on and off the LED here, yeah? right? Um, Sometimes it's necessary for you to switch off the LED. So if you don't want anyone to guess the coverage of the sensor, you could switch it off, but that will also create troubles when you're doing your walk test. You would not know whether the sensor is um, you know, catching you or all the coverage. So you will not know that. Um, so you could switch off this um, LED and switch it on by using that jumper. Also, you could make the uh, sensor to work. So you've got pulse setting basically. So you could put on pulse one, pulse two, um, and you can change that, change that value using this jumper setting. So this is a very basic um, PAR, which is a grade two basic PAR. So there's not much uh, happens here. Um, but you can see the pulse count is written here, fast, slow, and slowest. So you could just make it to work fast, slow. So that means if you put on a fast, it will be more sensitive. And if you put on a slow, it will be quite slow to react. So um, you could do that by changing the pulse setting. Um, so that's pretty much about this um, Texacom PAR. Um, so I'll see you in another video explaining about uh, the panel and the actual wiring. So just to summarize what we learned today is that um, we have two circuits here, alarm and tamper. So if you're using end of line, you'll be just wiring two cables there. So you need one in the alarm, one in the tamper. So when you come to deciding which terminal, the first one is what we're gonna wire for the tamper. So we're gonna use the first terminal and then the last one with alarm. So we're gonna use the last terminal. And the other pair is just for your auxiliary power for 12 volt. So you 12 volt, it's normally red cable that we use for 12 volt and then the black cable goes to the zero volt.